The exact order of events concerning the Holy Week or Passion Week has been a matter for debate, especially by biblical authorities, including theologists, for many years. My timeline as researched from authentic sources, including the Holy Bible, gives a rough chronology of events of Jesus' journey day by day through the Passion Week. That is, from Palm Sunday to Resurrection Sunday or Easter Sunday, and finally to Easter Monday, just as an addition. Day 1. Triumphal Entry on Palm Sunday on Palm Sunday, that is the Sunday before Easter Sunday, as earlier discussed on one of my videos titled The Significance of Palm Sunday, Jesus Christ, who already knows his main mission of laying down his life for you and me, set out on his journey to the cross with a trip to Jerusalem. Just before getting to the village of Bethphage, he sent two of his disciples ahead to look for a donkey and its unbroken colt, untie the animals and bring them to him. Jesus then continues his journey on the back of the donkey with humility as he slowly arrives triumphantly in Jerusalem, thereby fulfilling the old prophecy as written in the book of Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion, shout, Daughter Jerusalem, see your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fall of a donkey. He was welcomed to Jerusalem by crowds waving palm and other branches, shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus and his entourage, especially his disciples, spent this Palm Sunday night in Bethany, a couple of miles from Jerusalem, probably in Lazarus's and his two sisters, Mary and Martha's residence, as he was a very close friend of Lazarus and the whole family. We remember Lazarus was the one just raised from the dead after he had died for four days. The following Monday, Jesus went to Jerusalem for Passover. On his way, he cursed a fig tree for not bearing fruit. Some religious scholars saw this as representative of the Lord's judgment on the spiritually dead religious leaders, as a true living faith must bear spiritual fruit in a person's life. On arriving at the temple, he found it full of people dealing in corrupt practices, including money changers who were exhorting money from the people. The Bible states that Jesus was so upset that he started turning over tables and clearing the temple of these people, saying, The scriptures declare, My temple will be a house of prayer, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. He later returned to Bethany for his second night, probably again in the home of his friend Lazarus. Records are not specific about this. The Monday events are recorded by four canonical books of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. On the way to Jerusalem on Tuesday morning, Jesus spoke to his disciples and others about the importance of faith as he walked past the cursed fig tree which had withered. At the temple, religious leaders planned an ambush so as to place Jesus under arrest for being alleged to have established himself as a spiritual authority. Jesus was able to escape, saying, You blind guides, blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and dish, and then the outside also will be clean. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, 
but on the inside are full of the bones of the dead and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside, you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside, you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. So you testify against yourselves that you are the descendants of those who murdered the prophets. Go ahead then and complete what your ancestors started. You snakes, you brood of vipers, how will you escape being condemned to hell? From there later that Tuesday afternoon, Jesus and his company left for the Mount of Olives, which overlooks Jerusalem. There, in his usual fashion, speaks in parables and gives the Olivet Discourse, that is, a prophecy about the destruction of Jerusalem and the end times, its second coming, and the final judgment. The scripture reveals that it was also the same Tuesday that Judas Iscariot negotiated with the Supreme Court of ancient Israel to betray Jesus. Jesus and the disciples again returned to Bethany for the night. It is not clear from research and the scripture what Jesus did on Passion Week Wednesday, otherwise called Holy Wednesday or Spy Wednesday or Good Wednesday. Some scholars speculate he may have taken a day off after two strenuous days in Jerusalem to rest in Bethany in anticipation of the Passover. In passing, please allow me to briefly explain the Passover feast. The Passover feast celebrates Israel's deliverance from slavery in Egypt. Jews also celebrate the birth of the Jewish nation after being freed by God from captivity. Not long before the Passion Week, Jesus had disclosed to his disciples and the world at large that he had power over death by bringing Lazarus, his friend, back to life. This incredible miracle in Bethany made many skeptics and pessimists believe that Jesus was indeed the Son of God. On Holy Week Thursday, which you may refer to as Monday Thursday or Great Thursday, Jesus instructed Peter and John to prepare for the Passover feast at the upper room in Jerusalem. At sunset, Jesus began by washing his disciples' feet in preparation for sharing in the feast. This humble act of service makes a statement about how believers should love one another. This foot washing exercise is now being practiced by many churches in preparation for Monday Thursday. The disciples later that evening shared the feast of Passover with Jesus. It was at the Passover that Jesus said, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. The fulfillment being the giving of his body to the broken and his blood to be shed in sacrifice, thereby exonerating us from sin and death. It is also during this Last Supper that the Last Supper, or what we now refer to as communion, originated and was established by Jesus to his followers to practice in remembrance of him and his sacrifice. After Passover later that night, Jesus and the disciples left for the Garden of Gethsemane, where he prayed earnestly and in agony to God the Father. Luke 22 verse 44 describes that Jesus' sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. It was in the Garden of Gethsemane, that Jesus was betrayed with a kiss by Judas Iscariot and arrested from where he was taken to the home of Caiaphas, the high priest, where the old council was already waiting to gang up against Jesus. Some hours later, in the early hours of the morning, 
Peter denied knowing Jesus before the rooster crowed three times as foretold by Jesus. Good Friday is claimed to be the most testing, saddest, and unforgettable day of Passion Week. Our Lord Jesus Christ's journey turned treacherous and intensely agonizing in these final hours ahead of his death. Why then is it called Good Friday? Have you ever wondered? Scholars are divided on this issue. While doing the research on this topic, I stumbled on an answer that took my fancy, and I quote from Half Post of 19 April 2019. It reads, that terrible Friday has been called Good Friday because it led to the resurrection of Jesus and his victory over death and sin and the celebration of Easter, the very pinnacle of Christian celebrations. The disciple Judas Iscariot, who had betrayed his leader, was overcome with guilt and hanged himself in the early hours of Friday. Meanwhile, before the third hour, that Planned about 9 a.m., Jesus endured the shame of false accusations, condemnations, mockery, beatings, and abandonment. Jesus was sentenced to death by crucifixion, a horrible and disgraceful method of capital punishment at the time. Christ was spat on, tormented, and mocked as he was led away. He was also crowned with a crown of thorns before being made to carry the huge cross to Calvary where he was nailed to it. Jesus made seven final statements before dying on the cross. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit, were his first and last statements respectively. He then breathed his last breath at the ninth hour, which is around about 3 p.m. By about 6 p.m., the same Friday evening, Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea were granted the honor to take Jesus away. They laid him in a tomb. Jesus' body was guarded by Roman soldiers throughout the day on Saturday, the Sabbath. It was not until after the Sabbath ended at 6 p.m. that Christ's body was ceremonially treated for burial with spices supplied by Nicodemus. Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea were members of the Sanhedrin, that is, the court that condemned Jesus Christ to death. Both men had been secret followers of Jesus due to their conspicuous positions in the Jewish community. They both recognized that Jesus was, indeed, the long-awaited Messiah. The Holy Week comes to an end on Easter Sunday or Resurrection Sunday. It is the biggest day in the Christian calendar. This is when Christians celebrate Christ's resurrection. The day Jesus emerged from the tomb after his crucifixion, proving for Christians and the world at large there is life after death. On the Easter Sunday morning, many women, notably Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Salome, and Mary the mother of James, approached the tomb to find that the stone covering the entrance was no longer covering it. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. On the same day, Jesus appeared to people in at least five instances as documented. Mary Magdalene was said to be the first to see him according to the Gospel of Mark. Others are Peter, the two disciples on the road to Amos, and all of the disciples except Thomas. Although the Passion Week ends on Easter Sunday, why do we celebrate Easter Monday? In the UK, like in many other countries, including Nigeria, Easter Monday is the last day of the holiday celebrations before going back to normal activities again. 
It is not a national public holiday in many parts of the world. Easter Monday's main religious significance is that it is the day after Christians celebrate the Messiah's resurrection. Jesus Christ paid the penalty for sin by offering the perfect spotless sacrifice. He conquered death, both spiritually and physically, securing our eternal salvation. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the most significant event of the Christian faith. It is the rudimentary underpinning of all Christian doctrine. What if there was no resurrection? What would have been the fate of the Christian faith? Thank <laughs> you.